a model steamboat named Edith, this is part 18, making the condenser oil trap. The first thing to do is to cut out the blanks for the side plates that will be eventually soldered to the tube. And as you can see I'm doing this on my little bandsaw. The blade's getting quite blunt now, so you'll also notice that I'm holding the metal at a bit of a strange angle. That's because the blade's wandering. And it's nothing to do with the position of the guide. The guide's very high, exposing a lot of blade, but even if it wasn't, the blade would still wander about because it's blunt. With the piece of brass tube held firmly against one of the side plates, I draw around it with a felt tip pen. This clip shows the part after I cut it out on the bandsaw. And now to make sure that both of these parts are the same, I put part A on top of part B and draw around that. I could hold the tube on the second part, but then it might not be in the right position, so it's logical to do it this way. And then it's back over to the bandsaw with its very blunt blade to cut out the second part like this. You would think that if I lowered the guide so there was very little of the blade actually showing, then it would cut more accurately, but it doesn't at all. That's because the blade itself is quite thin. It's great for going round corners, but it's also pretty good for wandering about off the line. I purposely cut on the outside of the line, because now, using this disc sander, which is part of my belt sander, I can clean up the part precisely to the inner edge of the line, and the inner edge of this line corresponds with the shape of the other piece. These days, disc sanders are generally built into belt sanders, and they're very useful until you have to change the sanding disc, which is firmly stuck to the aluminium mounting. I spend a lot of time in my workshop making these videos and generally building models, so I really don't like jobs that are non-productive, not creative, and take too long to do. If this was fitted on with something like Velcro, it would be much easier. The good news, though, is I don't have to change this disc at the moment because it's still got a bit of life left in it, as you can see, it's trimmed the edge of this piece of brass perfectly. To get a really smooth finish though, I'm going to move over to the belt on top of the belt sander. And in no time at all, I have two very nicely shaped supporting plates for the condenser. After holding the tube in its approximate finished position and drawing round it with a felt tip pen, this gives me an approximate position where the tube is going to be soldered. But before I do that, I need to drill and tap some holes in these plates. I've marked the position where the holes are going to be drilled using a felt tip pen. The first felt tip pen mark on the brass was in the centre, but I couldn't really get the centre on the curved part. So all I did was just move the drilling machines crosswise until the drill was in line at the other end. And that way I end up with two holes in the brass plate. I would normally recommend using a centre drill when drilling holes in sheet metal, but brass is quite soft. So just for a change, I drilled the pilot holes with a 3 16 drill, then I drilled them out to tapping size for 5 16 by 32 threads per inch. And the tapping size for 5 16 by 32 threads per inch, which is an ME thread, is 9 30 seconds of an inch. And that is two drill sizes down from 5 16 of an inch, which is generally fine for ME type threads. Just in case you haven't watched any of the 1044 videos that precede this one, ME stands for Model Engineering. Now I have a basic kit of parts to make a horizontal condenser oil trap. And the next thing to do is to fit the fittings. These are 5 16 by 32 double unions. These items are commercially manufactured and they're available from my friends at Blackgates Engineering in most of the popular ME type threads. Yes, I could make them myself, but apart from it's very boring making these, it takes time and time is money. Making these for me is engineering for engineering's sake. And now the exciting part. This is some flux that I bought. And what I'm doing in this clip is giving the edge of the brass tube a really good coating of this flux. And with the brass tube in the correct position on the side plate, it's time to solder it all together. I did actually video the complete soldering sequence, but most of the video that I got wasn't really watchable because my hand and arm got in the way but here is a shot down inside the tube once it had been soldered. When this assembly had cooled sufficiently so I could handle it, I turned it over and accurately positioned it on the other side plate, and here I'm soldering it in place. But this time I do have video of the soldering process because it was much easier to film when I was doing it on the outside. In this clip I'm just demonstrating the use of flux. When I brush the flux on the metal, as you can see the solder flows wherever the flux is. When making a soft soldered component like this, I would clean up the solder 
by dipping the brush into some water and then cleaning off all the burnt residue before I let it cool. And now it's time for the big clean up. I don't think I'm going to paint this condenser so I need it to look fairly pretty even though it's going to fit right down in the bottom of the boat. I clean it first of all with emery cloth then a piece of scotch bright and then I polish it using the polishing spindle. I don't really need to clean this component to this extent but you must admit it looks a lot better than it did when I was soldering it and when I cleaned it up with the emery cloth and the scotch bright. So now I need to make a simple mounting to mount this part into the bottom of the boat. And this is the idea I've come up with. I'm going to machine slots in two pieces of mahogany. This is the mahogany that I have a lot of as well. This is really good quality wood and it's currently in the machine vise on the milling machine. I'm using a milling cutter called a slot drill to cut the slots in the wood. Because wood is much softer than metal I can actually cut this full depth in one go. Although the first cut is not full depth, I took a test cut first to make sure it was going to work. The slots need to be deeper than this, so once I made this test cut on the mahogany between the two marked points, I cleaned off the wood chippings with a paintbrush, and then I increased the depth by turning the handle and lowering the cutter down into the work. And once I adjusted the depth of cut to the right level, I adjusted the depth stop so that when I cut the other slot it would be exactly the same as this one. This clip shows me cutting the second slot, and after I've said this part, I'm going to speed up the video. I was beginning to think that my lifespan wasn't long enough to get to the end of this sequence, and now, here is a finished condenser oil trap, and as you can see, it just sits in these pieces of slotted mahogany. Before I can fit the condenser into the boat, I need to shape the bottom of these pieces of mahogany to fit the curvature of the hull, but eventually I will just place the condenser complete with the wooden mounting rails in the bottom of the boat with a generous amount of JB weld spread underneath the mahogany mountings. And after 24 hours when the JB weld is cured I can simply lift the condenser out of the slots, leaving the slotted supports inside the hull. I need to waterproof the mahogany and the first step is to spray them with some primer, plenty of it as well. I will be painting the entire inside of the boat, purely from a cosmetic point of view, but any wooden parts in the hull need to be perfectly waterproof because there's going to be water inside the hull. I don't think much is going to come in from the lake, but there will be some water coming from the steam engine and it's always better to waterproof wooden parts anyway. And that's about it for this episode, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.